Yeah, just give me all of the respect. I use your reverence as a reward. Huh. They know that I got the power and they looking at me like the source. Huh. Take my throne, boy, stop that. I'm on my hill, can't top that. You take this L, yeah, rock that. You know. I never needed a cold sign. Yeah, I'm gonna shine. I rock independent. Representing like I work for the Senate. You double LC, you ain't got no penny. Good morning, Knicks Universe. Good morning, KOD Nation. Stand up. And all you DJs, uh, wake up and get your coffee. Welcome to this Monday, January 30th edition of the Knicks Morning Brew. I am your guy, Hector, and I'm chilling with the one and only Pots and Pans, Jigga Man Porto. How you doing, gorgeous? Bro, you know, I love that we do the show at 11 a.m. Because mm-hmm. it gives me enough time to really get the brew in, you know, and like three monsters before 11 a.m. plus coffee means I'm so ready for next morning brew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because oh, if yeah. it was nine o'clock, bro, it'd be like, yeah, DJs, grab your coffee. Mm-hmm. No, for real, go grab your coffee. Like, we'd be really mellow, you know? It'd be really sad. So I'm glad we do it so late. How's the weekend, bro? Well, I'm good. First of all, your dietary um, ingestions, they, you know, <laughs> we, we need to work on that because Red Bull and coffee may not be the best mixture for your you know your inside joints but i'm good bro uh weekend was good here on this monday morning um phil couldn't join us because he has some he has some things he had to work out but shout out to my bro <laughs> phil in the chat philip philip i miss you phil <laughs> then of course we got eric wallace in the building E Y, what it do eric then of course the one and only blood of the panthers in the building salute 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 guys as you come in hit that like button for your boys but Sous, we got a special guest joining us today. Oh, you know, he's we, not, we got he's the not, closer? He's, the yes, closer? He's, he's not here yet, but as soon as he comes on, we'll be able to get him right away and have a ha, have the interview that we've been waiting for to have with my guy, Jay Boogie. But DSJ is in the chat. Delano's still The junior. troll of all trolls. What it do, DSJ? Hope all is well. Hope all is well. Phil just said his head hurts. Oh, Phil, feel a little better. Take some, take some Vicks. Put on your little temples right here. Put on little temples, get a little better. But bro, how how was how you feeling, bro? How was your weekend? Good, man. One, I'm excited when Jay Boogie gets here. I love when Jay Boogie stops by, man. He always just drops that that positivity and that energy. Like oh, I always yeah. want to run through walls. You know what I mean? Yes. Like I feel like today's the episode where I'd be like, yo, yo, Boog, can I get your number, bro? So I can just tap in on Jay Boogie. Like if I'm having one of those moments, be like, yo, yo, you free? Go and just yeah. have Jay Boogie give me one of those Jay Boogie moments. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm excited that um phil said it was my heart not my head oh you know what now you're just now you're being an emotional wreck yeah now you just, you want too much bro i was trying to make sure <laughs> no, your, head good, but now your heart hurts okay your heart hurts my fault i read it wrong oh <laughs> my gosh hold on heck you know what i know we're, we're we like to take our time get into topics all that but man I, i'm feeling blood the panther he he ain't wasting no time either, man. It's too unprotected. It's one protected camp too much for OG. I saw the report Ooh, 42 yeah. minutes ago. The Knicks talks. The rumors are heating up. The OG situation. Mm-hmm. The OG okay, situation, okay, okay, okay. it's starting to heat up, right? We are literally 10 days away. I'm going to say that again. We are 10 days away from the mm-hmm. NBA trade, dead, trade deadline. And as we get closer to the trade deadline, other teams are emerging alongside the Knicks as as contenders to acquire OG Ananobi. You got the OKC Thunder, who everybody expect would tank this season, but they're actually showing some fight. They are in the rumors when it comes to um, OG Ananobi. You got the Sacramento Kings, who is also in on the OG Ananobi talks. You got the Pelicans, who I think is a weird uh, weird choice to be in this conversation for OG Ananobi, but that's no hero there. So the Knicks, if they want to get that guy, you know how it is, Jigga Man. You got to pay something to get something, bro. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the, the last article I wrote or uh, read earlier, um, I want to say it was on Sports Illustrated. I, I'll, I'll double check Fan Nation to make sure people get the right credit. But yeah. their, their report was that it's really coming down to the Knicks and the Suns as the two front runners for OG. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know, man. We, we talk about it all the time, bro. Like it's trade this, trade that. It's give up picks, don't give up picks. All I but, know is we, we we need a first unit and second unit mm-hmm. that we can actually call like home, right? Right now mm-hmm. we, we can't mm-hmm. sit there and be like, who's our starting five? Who's our bench? So is OG a, a move that would be dope for us? I mean, can you say no? Like but, realistically, but what are you giving up is the scary part. Yeah, it's what you're giving up. And when it comes to the Suns, it's just, I know some people have like the Suns as the favorite, but it's like, where is he? Where is he going to play? Right. Are you going right. to Are you going to start OG over my Cal Bridges? I don't. I don't think you do that. So, are you trading for a guy in OG Ananobi who's making eighteen to nineteen million just to have him come off the bench? I don't. I don't see a scenario where Phoenix, who is going through so much turmoil that they're going through down there in Phoenix, wouldn't make a move like that to bring in a guy making that much money and have him come off the bench and sit on the bench. I don't. It, it makes no sense with me. But if we could get a three team trade going, we can help. Phoenix get OG and then we could get my Cal Bridges. That may that may be something that's a little bit interesting. But I just want to point out something in the chat just to check it out. My man Jonathan's in the building. Jonathan with the hot one right away. So, for real, everybody coming in hype on a Monday know, with the. I know. Oh, let's we not ready start. to go. Leave we all the happiness away, fellas. Let's get that's, at it. That's what happens when you come back after Nick's loss. But Jonathan says, "Do you think <laughs> we'll, uh, Randall will get wait, traded?" Wait, 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 wait. I'll cut you off. Hold on, Bro, I love how you said. And after a Knicks loss, homie, after a Knicks win, it's still the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, right. Do you right, think go. Randall will get traded? Uh, Jonathan, this is this right here. Uh, Nick fans are in a conundrum when it comes to Julius Randle. Um, I think the front office is going to hold on to Julius Randle a- as long as they can, try to make it work because this was a decision that they did. Leon Rose went out there inside um, Julius Randle to that extension, so he don't want to look like he got egg on his face. So for this season, no, Julius Randle would not get traded at this uh, at this mark of the season. In the off season, maybe. Maybe you know there's rumors that the Suns been wanting, uh, been eyeing Julius Randle. The mm-hmm. Phoenix Sun fans definitely want Julius Randle in Arizona, but I don't think Julius Randle will get traded during the season. Maybe in the off season, that's a big maybe and a hypothetical maybe as well. But right now, I, I wouldn't want the Knicks to trade Julius Randle. Why? Why? He's he's been our best player all, this season. I know some people say that. You know, Emmanuel quickly may be the best player on the team when it comes to value wise. Um, that's that's their opinion. But when it comes to the stats, I think Julius Randle has been the best player this season on the team. And you can't argue against that when it comes to the pure stats. Emmanuel quickly may be valued more when it comes to what you may get in return mm-hmm. in the trade because he's younger, he's under right. controllable contract, stuff like that. But when it comes to stats and who's been the better player this season, it's definitely Julius Randle. Yeah, I mean, arguably. The man's playing top 20 ball right now, right? Mm. So, uh, unless you're getting a King's Ransom back, I'm not on yeah. the boat. I would ship him right now, right? In the beginning of the season, well, we, we talked about it. I was down to trade Randall, right? But, oh, look, yeah. <laughs> King's Ransom. Blood the Panther, boy. We hooking. We, we, we in sync today. On a Monday that's morning, that's our ESPN. We, 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 that's our ESPN. It's that ESPN that's stuff. That's mm. our ESPN. The ESPN? The ESPN. I just... <laughs> You know, of course, yes. Would it be great to sell high and all that? Yeah, of course. Any player, right? You want to sell while they're at their max that you can get value. I just don't see them trading him, especially when you've got Dolan coming out backing Leon Rose 100%, right? He said he was the best guy for the job. They're going to keep Randall. And right now, I'm sorry, as a Knicks fan or person that loves basketball, you got to step back and be like, yo, if I'm a team, yeah, you, you build around what you have right now. So again, I'm still on the, 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 the van wagon of bring me pieces that's going to make sure we have healthy legs in the second unit. Because, man, it, it, it gets so ugly. Even when we win, it's still ugly. I'm sorry, you're not going to sit here and tell me, oh, well, we played immaculate basketball at all. Because we don't. So, yeah, I, I think Randall stays. I don't see him being traded. Um, if he does, man, right there. It better be a King's Ransom, bro. Like... What would you take? What would you want back for Randall, bro? Man, I do not want to 
have this conversation right now when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> trading um trading Randall because I know if we keep the trading Randall conversation going somewhere in the world SK is going to hop up wherever he's at and like jump on the chat <laughs> and start killing us in the chat. So respectfully, <laughs> respectfully, um, I don't want to have that combo. But no, honestly, um, if it was to come to it, if we were to include Julius Randle in a trade, it would have to be a trade where we are getting um, a superstar back in return. Right, it, it would have to be one of those big, um, big deals that we include Julius Randle to offset a superstar coming back to the Knicks. Um, will it happen anytime soon? I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I know everybody is is fans of uh, is a big fan of Obi Toppin and they want to see Obi Toppin on the floor. But one thing people got to understand when it comes to Obi Toppin, oh, the numbers don't lie. When it comes to Obi Toppin finishing around the rim, he has to work on that. That's probably one of the worst parts of his games. Yeah. When it comes to three years players. Now, check this out. When it comes to the three-year players in the NBA, Obi Toppin is, t- is in the top third when it comes to the worst percentage around the rim. He needs to work on that. He needs to work on his rebounding also. He needs to work on his defense. So before Obi Toppin can, can be a starter in the NBA, he has to work on those little flaws in his game. Like I said, when it comes to third-year players in the NBA, Obi Toppin is top three, if not top five, worst field goal percentage when it comes to finishing around the rim. He needs to work on that. He needs to work. Listen, I'm a big Obi fan. I'm a big Obi fan, just like Phil, just like Jig is a big Obi fan. But the numbers don't lie. Like, like our man Pete says, the numbers. The numbers do not lie when it comes to that. Obi Toppin needs to work on that point blank period. Yeah, I mean... He, he he shows these flashes that make you really be a fan of him, you know? Mm-hmm. But when you take a step back and look at how Randall's playing, you look at the, the time that OB does get when he's in and when he does look horrible on the boards, the, the more and more I'm realizing he really is going to end up being a, a trade chip for us, especially with the way Randall's playing right now. So if they are going to make any moves, it, it, it does concern me, but I'm pretty sure Obi's a major piece of that. Especially mm-hmm. with the fact that, man, we got to take IQ off the table. Like, that boy cannot be an option, period. TC Steals. What it what do, up? what Happy it do, you? my man. Oh, actually, well, since you brought that up real quick, let's take a little roll call. I saw we had G Money in the chat. Yes, what up, G yes. Money? Oh, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me do this for DSJ. I troll to the millions and millions. That was my rock voice, bro. <laughs> you just drop one of those. Oh, one, one, all right. One of those eyebrows. How about Blood of the Panther? Trade machines and NBA rumors been keeping me up at night. Bro, you telling me. Well, I blood love of the, the ones Eddie's been throwing out there, bro. You waking up with, like, mad people commenting on that stuff. Yeah, but Blood of the Panther, as long as you're getting your sleep at night, that's all that matters, bro. You know, you could stay up. You could do your thing when it comes to the trade machines. As long as you're getting sleep and it's healthy for you, bro. We, we want to make sure you're healthy, Panther. But um, for Miss New King, what up, my guy in the chat? Before we continue, we got our guest backstage, Mr. Uh-oh. Jay Boogie. But before I bring up Jay Boogie, Nick fans, hold on, hold on. Nick fans, before I even drop that, did you see on Friday when the earth stood still, Mr. James Dolan went on WFAN with Craigie Carton? Did you did you see that? First of all, I don't remember the last time James Dolan been on WFAN. Um, I think with the whole um uh yeah, I don't I don't remember the last time he was on FAN. It was the it was a whole incident in the garden with Charles Oakley. That was the last time he was on WFAN. But he was on with, with, with Craig Carton, like I said. And James Dolan said this. I have no plans whatsoever to sell the team at this point. I'm not retiring anytime soon. It's a family control asset. So someone in the family will own it. So all you Nick fans out there. I know I probably yeah I probably sound like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> what, what, what James Dolan said, <laughs> but James Dolan is the owner of this team, right? I know a lot of people they feel a certain way about James Dolan, but you got to understand this man operates a private business. 
He has every right to do with a private business he so chooses. So if he does not want um, lawyers inside of Madison Square Garden who were in the middle of suing him, which I understand, I wouldn't want them in there either. Where I have my reserves, Jigga, and you could probably fill me in on this before Jay Boogie comes on, my reserves is as long as you let the people know who is uh, who are patronizing your establishment that they are subjugated to this facial recognition software and technology, as long as this is made clear. Listen, when you come into this establishment, we got this type of security. We got facial recognition, which we put as long as you let people know before they, I have no issue, but you just have to let people know. It's like, whatever you do, Jigga, if you're going to go rock climbing, you got to sign a waiver, letting, um, letting, let, letting them know that you're good with signing the waiver of rock climbing. If you get injured, it's the same thing when it comes to right. facial recognition. If I'm going to be entering a business, if you go to take my, likeness and put it on a database just let me know bro yeah and the good thing is i'm sure i speak for many of us we don't read half of the crap that they have assigned anyways bro i'm pretty sure i have given access to every app in the world i'm like oh download yeah sure right yeah approval accept 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 i'm pretty sure you know every app out there owns me you're welcome tiktok yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, you know, I what, mean, be what honest was, about it. What was funny is that when, when he was talking about it, he said he was like, Yeah, you know, like I you could be a fan and you know, you can you can share your emotion. Like, if you come in my face and say that this seems I won't get mad at you, and then two seconds later, he's like, <laughs> Well, we kick out the people that you know cross the line. If you get in my face and you curse at me, I may kick you out. So <laughs> that was the only fun, but Without further ado, let's get right into this. Before I bring Jay Boogie up, we got a little interest theme song for him. Like, this was WW. Since the Royal Rumble was this weekend that just passed, tune into this and we'll be right back. I think we see Willis coming out. There he comes right now. Six feet ten from Grambling. The captain of the next one. Valuable player. The NBA. New York, New York. On your blue, tried and true, we the next. We still some knickerbockers. Whole world shockers, all eyes on us. Coming in like Willis Reed. Y'all gonna see all eyes on us. New York, New York. New York, New York. New York, New York. All eyes on us, all eyes on us. Coming in like Willis Reed. Y'all gon' see all eyes on us. We still some nigga bakas. Whole world shockers, all eyes on us. Oh, uh, well, Leon Rose did. No spite of the future set for the young kids. Let off, this a straight aim. I wish the worst in the best way for Danny Aim. You wanna rob us for our draft picks? What? Strip us down, take the logo off New York Knicks. I guess by now you don't feel the shine. Them ain't trades we pulling up. Them quitting grind. Let me give you a little history. Us New Yorkers reacting, man, you quickly. Ooh, J Boogie, what it do? What it do? What it do? Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's. I can't, I can't do it like you do it, J Boogie. But good morning, Unc. <laughs> Hey, good morning, man. Blessings to y'all on this beautiful Monday it is. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no need to lollygag. You know what I'm saying? Feeling however you feeling coming off your weekend yeah. and being upset you got to go to work this Monday. No, be happy that you got a job to go to. Be happy that, you know, them bills is getting ready to come up. This is the 30th, right? You got bills circling around. So be happy you got somewhere to go to punch in the clock to continue on making funds to feed your household, your family, your loved ones. They deserve everything that you're doing for them, you know what I'm saying? So be blessed about this Monday. Shout out to these, to these two gentlemen, you know what I'm saying? My man Hector, the Jigga Man. And can't forget my man Ill Phil. I understand he's not here, but he's still here. And shout out to the greatest people that's, you know what I'm saying, around inside this NBA league that belongs to the chat. Ain't nobody more better, more special, and more loyal, more respectful than what we have for this orange and blue. You know what I'm saying? So good morning to everybody, man. How is everybody doing this day, man? Hope everybody the greatest form of health, the greatest form of life. And if anybody that's going through something, we don't pray that you just go through it. We also pray that you get through it. You know what I'm saying? So what's yeah. happening with y'all this Monday, man? Boom, man. I'm glad you're here, homie. Appreciate it. 
I was ready. I was ready for that 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 Jay Boogie motivation, bro. Now 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 we can get started. Now the show. Yeah, when you got my math, you can call me anytime, man. You, got, <laughs> you can call me anytime, man. You know, I like checking checking in with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I get great conversations with everybody off the you know what I'm saying off the wire, but still on the wire. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah I gotta yeah. tell you, heck, I didn't know we had the short version for when we were bringing him up. I was mm. just getting into the track too. I didn't know you even took it off. I'm up. <laughs> oh, that's not, that's, that's not my doing. That's your DJ. That's not <laughs> my doing. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I'm guilty for that. It's, yeah, it's all on me. Let's to the morning brew with Jiggy Man. Put on Jay Boogie the remix. All right, all right, all right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let's, let's, job, let's man. How you doing, though, man? I'm I'm good, Jay Boog. Um, you know, appreciate you taking this time out um this morning to have this conversation with us. Obviously, you 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 are a, a guest to the channel. I should say family to the channel. On top of that, um, you've been on several times, but this is an episode dedicated dedicated specifically for you and giving you your flowers, Jay Boog. Mm -hmm. Um, Friday when we was on um, Blorman's Tears late at night, um, Jigga, after I left you and the guys with the baseball sim, I yeah. see Uncle Freezy, he had his panel going, Jay Boogie, um, uh, um, G-Man for Life, a bunch of them was there. So I was like, let me just jump on that panel real quick right. just to kick with the guys. Right. And one thing I brought up in there is that Jay Boog, we, we have known each other going on three years. Right. Um, and over these past three years, it's always been a family affair anytime we hang out or, or anytime we're in the same panel. But there's one thing that, you know, other people who, who are watchers, who are just viewers, they don't understand when it comes to Jay Boogie. How did you get to where you at right now when it comes to being um, the face of the fandom, when it comes to being a Knicks fan, when it comes to being that voice for the Knicks community? How did you get there and where did, where did it all start for you? Well, I, I, in, in reality, it all started for me from Knicks fan TV, which I am still a part of Knicks fan TV, so... Let me go ahead and put that out there. Um, it all started, you know, I was just a caller calling up, you know what I'm saying? And I just, every time I called, you know, and, and, and in a short period of time, you know, I just was, you know, speaking my mind and what was going on, but also just letting everybody know how blessed were they need to be for themselves. And then it just kept carrying over game after game, you know what I'm saying? Until, you know, CP said to me one day, you know what I'm saying? Yo, we might have to make you the close or something. So, um, I started calling and I continue on calling and then he stopped taking my phone calls in the middle of the show and just started making me wait all of making me wait 45 minutes, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> waiting for me to be the closer. So then once that occurred, then you know what I'm saying, me and him was on the same understanding mm -hmm. that he wanted me to just to be a part of the show, but just as a closer. And um the same time, you know, as me doing that, I started dripping around, going to, you know. Um, I figured out how to go to other shows and found other contents, you know what I'm saying, and went, you know, and started, you know, rocking with them a little bit, you know, doing doing what I do, man. But honestly, it started from Nick Fan TV where Jay Boogie started doing, you know what I'm saying, it's got his really awareness, and I just added on to, you know, added on to it, you know what I'm saying, to where, you know, he can expand. And um, when you, be honest, when you say salute, 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 you know, um, uh, you can't say it like like me. Let me just put this out there too. That's yeah. Zulu come from Gmo. Let me yeah. and I always let him know that you know. But what he did, I just remixed it. That's all I did. You know, I just you know, salute, salute, salute. I salute, 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 three capital S's. You know, blessings help. You know, what I'm saying I just remixed it at all. But that slogan comes from comes comes from Gmo. I must say that you know. And um, I just I get a lot of slogans and stuff from a lot of people throughout. Um, all the all the content creators, some even from chats and everything, you know. And I take it, you know, what I'm saying and I just critique it, and you know, and 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 just give it back to the people. But I make sure I try to let each and everybody know if um if I got something from you or I say something that you say, I always like to make sure that I it's not my creation. This is that person's creation that deserved that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like to give back. Like if Jigga Man say something right now, I might mm -hmm. say it come Wednesday or Thursday somewhere. But I'm going to say, don't quote me for saying it. I'm just repeating what Jigga Man say. You know what I mean? Because um, we need to constantly try to, we need to constantly um, allow ourselves to carry on, you know, our message and the next man's message or the next woman's message. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes something somebody might say somewhere, they might not get heard doing that that period mm -hmm. of time but if you hear it and you don't share it then that message go that message goes nowhere so if i hear it you know and, and i know it need to be heard again i'm going to say it again so 
That's just what I do. But yeah, man, I started from Nick Fan TV, man, all the way to this day right here. Nick Fan TV, all the other podcasts, rocking with you, even on the Man Man Show, Lawrence mm-hmm. Tears, you know, been up mm-hmm. on, you know, all these shows, you know, um, NBKs, you know, all the, all the channels up under him, the Gamma, the Legions, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So many shows I, I've been rocking on, you know what I'm saying? And, for the love of the game with Will and Harwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the love of the game with Will and Harwell. Yeah, exactly. One, two, three, four. The love of the game. To my guys over there. Shout, shout mm-hmm. out to Canteen Wireless, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And them people, you know what I'm saying? Supporting and throwing, you know what I'm saying? Making sure the brand is, you know, it's being lifted up, man. So many, it's so many podcasts, man. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm just, unfortunately, I haven't got around to doing a remix of the podcast, you know, because I, every time a podcast come out, I'm like, hey, how I'm going to fit this podcast on? But one day there will, there will be a, a remix to the podcast. Don't count that out. Well, I, I think I think every year you got to you gotta drop a new remix for the podcast joint and, and the Christmas joint. I think those are two staples when it comes to Jay Boogie and the catalog that people know, but or at the same time, it's something that you can play around with. But I'll throw it over to Jigga just because I know he probably has a few questions that he want to ask. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. well, I, didn't, I appreciate you sharing the Knicks fan TV story because I didn't know that. I didn't know that, yeah. you know, Jay Boogie started off like the Mariano Rivera, okay, yeah. of Knicks yeah, fan that's, TV. That's they him. played that's the him. Sandman music when this man came out. Yeah. He said, I waited for Forty-five minutes, like what? The <laughs> <heck>? <laughs> Derek Jeter, I was, I'm the Mario Rivera. That's so there you go. It. <laughs> so, so book. I mean, as an OG, you know, I always want to ask questions about your fandom, man. Right? Mm-hmm. You've been following the Knicks forever. As an OG, who who was that one player for you, bro? That that's like that guy. Who's who's Jay Boogie's all time Nick? Oh, look at him stack. My all-time Nick. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't carry Clyde because uh, when I first started, I was born in 1968. So I'm, I really didn't un- get the understanding of Clyde. I just heard of Clyde, so I can't carry Clyde. But I came up, you know, in that short period of time with Bernard King. Uh, I used to love watching Michael Ray Williams and Ray, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Ray Richardson and Ray Williams, especially when they used to go against the Seattle Supersonics mm-hmm. late at night against Dennis Johnson and Gus Williams. Of Gus Williams and Ray Williams, they brothers. Um, but be honest with you, man, I, I I never get over Pat Ewing. Pat Ewing was just like you know, Pat Ewing was like the most dominant thing that hit New York City mm-hmm. before he got to New York. You know, if you come from my era where I came from, you know, I think um. Pat Ewing really was the first fashion guy because that Georgetown Hoya jacket was everywhere. Mm, you know, mm-hmm. you know, you get robbed for that jacket, you know what I'm saying? And um doing back in them days, that Georgetown yeah. Hoya jacket was crazy. And then them Ewings, you know. I just um Pat Ewing pretty much is the like the staple of the um the New York Knicks, you know what I'm saying? The heart and soul of the New York Knicks to me. Um in my era, he will always be, but my most um Watchable player that you know I loved and, and appreciated him night in night out was Carmelo Anthony. Mm. You know that that guy right there. You know for him, Carmelo was like you. Know, Carmelo was Carmelo did what we wanted a lot of these guys to do. Even mm. though we paid a lot and people compared, we paid too much for him and all that. But I always say, them guys that we that traded we traded for Carmelo. Where are they now? What have they done? You know what I mean? Yeah. So who was them guys? But um, Carmelo did what we would have hoped a lot of these players that, you know, we had eyes on to become Knicks would have done for stay way here. Nah, they don't need to trade me. No, trade me to the Knicks. You know, if you trade me anywhere else, I ain't even going to stay there. We needed that from a lot of other players. You know what I'm saying? Including Donovan. Yo, send me over here. He's a good mm. Samaritan guy and everything, but if this is where you wanted to be, your heart was here, yo, send me over here. Don't send me to the way I'm not gonna be happy there. Don't nobody else ask for me. Don't nobody trade for trade for me. I'm not gonna I wanna go to New York. But Melo did that. He got his way here, man. I just love the moments Melo brought to the table. He never um shied away from anything. Um he was always there. He gave it his all, you know. Um he just did a lot for the community. Even with the situation going back to Baltimore when they had all that bad timing going on, mm-hmm. you know, he called his friends out there, he walked the streets of Baltimore and all that there. Yeah. That was my biggest Carmelo moment, you know what I'm saying? 
as with him being a New York Nick was what he did in the city of Baltimore to walk the streets, you know what I'm saying, and try to, you know, see saw that violence. But yeah, but Pat Ewan's gonna always be my heart and soul, but my most favorable um player to watch to be entertained was really Carmelo Anthony. Mm. Nice. I, yeah. I just wanna say I know I wasn't yeah, on screen. I stepped that. I stepped away for a second, but I had you in my earpiece. What happened was my door started banging. I hear cops outside, fire department. I was like, what the? I ran downstairs. I had you on my ear. I'm listening to your answer. The cops talking to me. The school across the street had a bomb threat. I was like, oh, it must be exams. And then that was the conversation <laughs> with the cops. I was like, what the? All right. Well, we so, glad we glad we glad you good. We glad you good, but yeah, we glad you good, man. We glad you here because we know the last time I saw you was hang gliding. Hey, yeah. when you left this, I didn't know what was going on. I, you know, oh, I didn't know what man. might be going on right now. When he said that, I was in the chat. I about died. I, that's why I had to jump back that in. Was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I what I wanted to bring up to Boogie, and you made a great point about um Patrick Ewing. When it came to Patrick Ewing in the '90s, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you guys could correct me, but I feel Patrick Ewing was the first New York sports athlete, professional athlete, that was able to transcend more than just a basketball court, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, with the Georgetown, the influence on the culture, that was by accident. That wasn't something that was designed by Patrick Ewing or he wanted to make that happen. No, that's just people just gravitated to Patrick Ewing, especially, you know, if you're from New York City and you're an immigrant family, if you come from the Caribbean, Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago, wherever you come, Antigua, and you can see someone that you can see yourself in and Patrick Ewing, being that he is first-generation immigrant kid raised in the States, raised in New York City, mm -hmm. and seeing how important Patrick Ewing was to those type of New Yorkers, the mm -hmm. underbelly of New York City, if you would say, because that's really what it is. Right. But Patrick Ewing was the first professor of New York sports athlete in my, in my eyes that was able to transcend Mm -hmm. just basketball more than just basketball what he meant for the culture like you said georgetown like you said his sneakers the ewing which was I I iconic at the time to me um wasn't i'm not gonna say it was on brand with the jordans because jordans and patrick Ewing, whatever but just like the barclays you know people say that the barclays were their were their favorite type of sneakers growing up and that's what people feel when it comes to the ewing sneaker as their uh, favorite sneaker growing up right Will yeah. we ever get another Patrick Ewing on our team, man? I, I miss Ewing. I really do. I'd love to to have a reincarnation of Patrick Ewing for the Knicks, man. Do you do you think do you think you, my, my fault, Boogie? Do you do you think it was a a, a love like Patrick Ewing wasn't appreciated by Nick fans as he should have been appreciated back then because the number one pick in the NBA draft, everybody said this was going to be a, a crazy um talent coming in. Some people felt that he never really reached his potential or what he should have been. What's your thoughts when it comes to Patrick Ewing from that point of view? Well, you know, I mean, when when, when they say that, you, I gotta, I, you know, you, I gotta ask, you know, the people the, the question and put the question back on them. You know what I'm saying? You know, how far did you think? How far did you want Pat Ewing to go compared against who he'd been playing against? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you, you talking about for, he coming through with the Boston dominant errors. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was dominant teams. You know, and then and then the Chicago Bulls, and you know, I mean, the, even fighting with the Indiana Pacers, we was yeah. like neck to neck. One and two, pretty much up under the Bulls, up under the Pistons, up under the Celtics. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Up under these teams. So, um, it hurts to see that a guy as dominant as he as he is and player for uh, for what he was, for him not to have a championship ring in New York. But I do know and understand, you know what he was up against. You know, mm -hmm. he was up against some elite. And then the one chance when he did have a chance to win it. He was hurt that year with him and Marcus Camby, Latrell mm -hmm. Street with Allen Houston and all that right there going against San Antonio. I do believe in my heart that was our year to win it. We was going to win it that year, but that, I think it, I think it was his Achilles or something like that. He yeah. mm -hmm. and he did not play. That hurted us right there. I mean, Larry Johnson, yeah, we had we had it that year, but you know to go against them two twin towers, you know what I'm saying, and Tim Duncan and and and. and, and and um, David Robinson, you know, small as we was, you know, they they was just taking turns punishing Larry Johnson, you know, punishing. Mm -hmm. him. So yeah, those Twin Tower days were no joke, man. Them boys, yeah. You know, when they had that Robinson combination, I I used to love watching them play. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that was one of those teams. 
But I mean, even TC Steel says it best, man. 90s B ball was the best. It was the greatest era. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I, I do think they did the best they could <laughs> to kind of like, you know, um to um put things around. Pat, the only one thing that I wish would have stayed, I wish we'd have kept him and Mark Jackson together. Mm. I really wish that tandem right there would have been together. I just feel like Pat Ewan and Mark Jackson would have been so much more dominant than what Mark Jackson and Rick Smith mm. were, or Mark Jackson and even Reggie Miller were. Mm. You know, you got two Big East dudes, two guys that's familiar with playing in the garden, come from up, and, you know, enough, keep that together, and we broke it up, you know, so. I, I, I would ask Boogie, um, when it comes to the that situation with Mark Jackson, was it was it let known to the fans why they traded Mark Jackson? Because to me, looking back on it, if you tell me Mark Jackson and Patrick Ewan, they should never been split up, right? It, did it ever come out why they decided to trade Mark Jackson? Was it a contract dispute? What what, what was it? I you know, be honest with you, I had to dig in it. That's something I had mm. to ask a brilliant a brilliant mind. You know, like you know the um. Uh, the freezies, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The CPs, the, the um, the um, um, gamos and stuff. Um, um, sim, you know, them mm -hmm. guys, you know, they really, really would know that. But, you know, I just, I don't know what that reason was, but I know it hurt it. You know, you went back mm -hmm. to back years and got rid of two elite New York guards. You got rid of Rod mm -hmm. Strickland, then Mark Jackson. I don't know what it was. I don't know if they felt like maybe they'd be better outside of the city and too much was going on for them to be in the city. I don't know what it was. And I don't want to, you know, say something and I ain't 100% yeah, 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 yeah. right. No, I get it. I you know, get it. I get it. I don't, I don't know. I just know somehow, some way, I wish them two guys could have stayed together in New York City. Yeah. I yeah. can't but argue just, that. Just, just to add on, I throw it over to you, Jigga Man. When it comes to Patrick Ewan, just looked up his stats right now. Patrick Ewan. From 1985, his rookie year, mm -hmm. until 1997, 1998, Patrick Ewan averaged more than 20 points per game. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about, right? Patrick Ewan had 13, 14, 15, 16, a 17-year career in the NBA. In 13 Man. years, 13 seasons straight, he had over 20, point, uh, 20 points per, uh, plus points per game. That mm -hmm. right there is an amazing stat. Um, yeah. uh, just looking into it, like, wow, I would have – you would probably thought like probably a couple of them in between probably would have been less than 20. But no, every season when he first came in the league, he was averaging 20 points, nine rebounds, basically a double-double for every year that he was in the league. Patrick Ewan was a phenomenal presence. He was one of the probably one of the first big men back there that were able to step back and shoot a jumper, shoot a three if he had to. Yeah. It wasn't in his game, but if he had to shoot a three if he was open, he was going to knock that down. And Patrick Ewan... He was he was ahead of his time as a big man in the NBA. If Patrick Ewan was around this day and age in the NBA right now, my God, I could just imagine the numbers and stats he would put up today. Right. And he developed those skill sets. You know, mm -hmm. Pat, Pat had no offense. You know, coming out of Georgetown, he blocked shots, rebound, and caught dunks and putbacks. You know what I'm saying? As the years went on in New York, he developed, you know, skill sets. You know what I'm saying? Jump hooks. Drop steps, uh, facing up shooting jumpers, and he developed that. So I only say that for guys, you know what I'm saying, who are in the league and they're not developing now. You know what I'm saying? You can develop your skills, you know, but you just got to want to get better within yourself. And that was something that Pat Ewan wanted to do. He wanted to get better because, you know, people was just looking at him as just a defensive threat and all that there, you know what I'm saying, just a dunker and a, just a rebounder. Pat wanted to elevate his game and, you know, show you, I'm, you know, first I'm capable of learning different, you know, techniques and skills and then come into the game and do it, you know what I'm saying? That's what Pat, you know, he had to respect his hunger and his drive for, you know, for his career, man. Shout out to, to the captain, man, the big 33, man. Mm -hmm. So let, 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 let's shift gears because I, I want to talk to you, Boog, about just the, let's just look over the span of the last four games, right? Mm -hmm. We all knew going into this, we were a little concerned, but when you came on a, on the panel, we all talked about it. Yeah, we, we're going to walk away with some wins. We mm -hmm. weren't sure which ones we'd walk away with, but we right. believed it wasn't going to be the, oh, there's going to be a five game losing streak. We, we, we felt like, no, we can pull away one or two from these. We lose to the Raptors, right? What was right. it? Nine points? Nine, ten points? I, I can go back and look, but I know we lost that one. Then we had yeah. the Cavs, which we, we pulled that one. 
we, we, we then pull the shock of the Celtics and then bought back to reality with the Nets. How are you feeling over those four games, Boogie? Are you feeling like we've gotten some questions answered or do you think we're still in a position now where we have more questions to ask? We definitely got more questions to ask, more questions to answer. We definitely have that. But right now, you know, the team is in a good position. You know, I, I mean, I wouldn't switch out this position where we at for anything, you know. And then Julius said it, said it himself, you know, after the Boston game, you know, and they asked him the question, you know, oh, how do you feel about you know, we're gonna we're gonna win some games, that we we're gonna beat some teams, and then we're gonna lose to some teams, you know. He said that, you know, but um I'm I'm one of the ones that I appreciate what the Knicks have right now, where they at right now, you know. Um Cause I don't, I'm not one of them guys that look at the schedules and feel like, yo, we can't play or right, we can't, right. you know what I'm saying, contend against any of these guys. I feel like we can go out there on the floor and on any given night, we can beat anybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cause this, this is a make or break league where, where mm-hmm. every night somebody's being made and every night somebody's being broke. So, you know, um, I love where we at, man. But over that span right there, that just goes to show that, yo, we got a chance to beat and give and beat any of these teams that you know that's in front of us, you know, on a on a on a on a nightly basis. It's just that how much do the players they want it? And even when the games that we lose, you gotta let those games carry over to the next big team that you're playing because it's the, right. it's not stopping, you know, once you once you lose or win your last game, it doesn't stop there. You have to get up and get prepared mm-hmm. and be ready to go. It's like, yeah, you come off a high rise playing against Boston. So what? That game is so what? It's over. With. You're going home. You have to get up and be prepared and ready to go. You know what I'm saying? We got Brooklyn. You had every night. You must, you know what I'm saying, lay down and wake up in the morning ready to go and forget about what happened last night, though. So, but, um, I just love where the team is at. I'm not one of the ones that's upset about what's going on. I, I'm not in no. I don't do that tank talk, none of that type yeah, stuff, no. right there. You ain't gonna get the tank talk from me either. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, man. I, I love, I love looking at the schedule. I look at mm-hmm. every every schedule. I say we're gonna beat these guys. Yeah. Uh, I don't care who it is. I, I always feel like we got a, a chance to beat these guys. You know, and um, um, I'm so glad. One one thing I want to say before I forget, you know. There's no more lining up the New York Knicks and figure out, you know, this is the team that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make a statement on. You know what I mean? What I mean by that, you know, um, I'm glad um Jalen Brown, you missed them free throws. I'm glad of that because yeah. you tried to line us up. You could have played the night before and played against um 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 who was it they played against? Um they played uh, a, they, they, they played, played a, the team that we just that we just beat. Um I forgot who it wasn't Toronto because we lost to Toronto. I think it was Toronto that they lost to. They they played somebody that he could have played against, but you tried yeah. to, you know, use us for, you know what I'm saying, you'll come back and come back and play at the crib and try to line us up and you got what you got, you know what I mean? Um I'm glad the situation was I thought LeBron was trying to line, line us up to get a celebration on on on, on most points, you know. You know, Steph Curry, he he broke that in our record, you know, in our building, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to see LeBron come about in the garden and set the all-time lead scoring record and um overtake Kareem in our building, you know what I mean? So many people be trying to line us up, you know what I'm saying? And we need to stop stop people from coming in our building, you know what I'm saying, doing things, you know, uh, um, setting a, 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 a milestone and all that. Protect Yo, Boogie, more, I, I, I say it all the time. I feel yeah. like – the most highlights this season in the garden comes from other teams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, if you yeah. were to make a highlight reel and force right. it based on just NBA in total, right. I don't think we even make the freaking highlight reel at our own yeah. house. And like, that's little... crazy. It's been a weird run of home games. We, but... we... Go ahead, Hank. Go ahead. No, oh, no. All I was going to add on to it, we are, um, we, are, we are 15 and 11 on the road. Mm-hmm. And we are 10 and 13 at home. And to mm-hmm. add on to Jay Boogie's point, I just looked it up. Jay Boog, they played the Miami Heat that game before they played That's us. What it was. Yeah, he ducked that game. He didn't want yeah. that work. He want to line us game. up and play and thought you was going to get a good number. Yeah, you get what you got. You get the Julius <laughs> laugh at the free throw line. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Jay Boogie, on our first episode, and I'll throw right over to, to, to you, uh, Jigga, my fourth, cutting you off. On our first episode, Jay Boogie, when you came on the next morning, Brew, you was on here with uh, myself, Jigga, Phil, L. It was a nice first episode. But you said something about Julius Randle that mm-hmm. not that many fans uh, uh, heard or even, you know, paid witness to. When you went to the Garden for that opening day that you was there at the Garden, 
And you had that conversation with Julius Randle. You right. came on the show and you told us that Julius Randle said, listen, tell the fans I'm going to be back. Tell the mm -hmm. fans it's going to be different. Has he answered that for you so far on January 30th? Has 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 Julius Randle won you over? I, I shouldn't say won you over because you was always a Julius Randle supporter. But right. do you think Julius Randle lived up to what he what to that conversation he had on you when you had that back then? Yeah, I was one over. I was one over with Julius Randle when he told he told the security guard, "Nah, he good. He with me." That right there, you know what I'm saying? Let me know. You know what I'm saying? That you know mm -hmm. he appreciates uh, a guy from the podcasters, and because if he appreciate me, he, that means he's appreciating a lot of people because he's watching, he's tuning in. But that lets me know he appreciated me for him to tell the security, you know, I got him. He's with me. You know what I mean? That's the first thing. But when you know, I had the conversation with him, you know what I'm saying, and it's just talking with him, you know, out generally, and um, I'm telling him that, you know, you know, I got another song for you, man, but I ain't done it yet because, you know, I, you know, what are you going to do on all that? You know, you back, whatever. And Julius was like, yo, yeah, you can tell the people I'm back. I'm getting ready to give it to him. I owe it to the people. He, that's what he told me that night. And, um, He's kept his word, you know. He kept his word. He said, "Yo, tell the people I'm back. I'm coming. I'm." He's playing hard. He's doing everything mm -hmm. he can do, you know. Now he does have a couple of, you know, bonehead mistakes here and there. Mm -hmm. But all players do that, you know. what I'm saying. I mean, I don't compare him to LeBron James, but LeBron got way more turnovers than Julius. I don't mm -hmm. compare him to Greek, but Greek got way more turnovers than him, you know what I mean? So he's going to make some mistakes here and there. But the great, great accomplishment of Julius, you know, you know, he accepted, you know, brushing. And he accepted, you know, his mistakes and he's willing to, you know, what I'm saying to face the music and make things better. It started in the summer, playing in the open gyms, you know, letting people come out, see him, dab him up, touch him up, rocking with the fan, say what you want to say. I'm here to face the music. So right now, oh Judy is a song, you know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. gonna see, I'm gonna see him on um, Saturday, because I'll be in the Delta in the Delta family room on um, Saturday and Sunday. I, I'll be there for back-to-back -back games. Um, this time me and my whole family, my wife and my um baby, we we going and stuff. But um, I got a new song that I'm getting ready to put out for Julius. Not too much longer. I just needed a little bit more information on some of the other players. But the song is gonna be called "No Games Off," and that's what mm -hmm. Julius does. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta speak upon you know what I know what's happening. That guy takes no games off. He's missing no games where all these dudes is putting up. All these dudes are sitting out games. Julius is there each and every night. That's one thing we can say. That man is 100% dependable. You know what I mean? He's going to come on that floor and he's going to play however minutes that Tom leave him out there, you know, and he's going to play. So that for, you know what I'm saying, we can't get that compared to some of these guys. Like I, want, I put a ticket in it and it got crushed with my ticket last night. Because I didn't know that um, the Clippers was going to sit out all them guys they set out last night. So, yeah. you know, um, when you compare to some of these guys, you know what I'm saying, night in, night out, they don't stand up, man. But I do got a new scenario that one day maybe my dream will come true. I will see the NBA commissioner. I have the right thing that will stop all that, you know, um, um, missing, missing, get, um, missing games and eliminate tanking everything so that's something that i got i got it you know um inside my own I, I got it written up um i got it on copy written and everything something that one day i'm gonna be able to present to somebody that maybe that can get to the commissioner you know what i'm saying because i had the right scenario where all that tanking and all that ducking games and all that that should be outlined especially for the fans that spend their hard-earned money to go see these games you know what i'm saying and you're not there you're, and you're a favorite player of theirs. That's not right, you know? So Yeah. yeah hearing the tank word, it, it, it irks me kind of like everybody I'm wins. I'm saying that my bad. I don't, I'm not, no, no, no. <laughs> you could. But, yeah. but when people, like, say it with passion, like they want to do it, right? Yeah. It's it, it goes on the list of uh, participation trophies. Everybody's a winner. Like, that shit pisses me off, too. Like, those are two things, like – in sports, you should not be tanking just to make yourself better. Stupid. I don't know how to wake up and 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 tell myself, "Yo, you're gonna lose today." Yeah, you I don't know, know how to what? wake up. Let's go. Let's go out there and lose right today. Let's <laughs> lose. I just don't know how to do that. Then. You know what I'm saying? If, if you beat me, you're just gonna beat me. But I don't know how to tell you you're better than me. 
I don't know how to do it. I wasn't raised up like that. You know, you just got to prove it to me. And then when you prove to me that you beat me that day, I'm going to go practice harder to come back and want to play against you again. I just don't, I just don't know how to you lay just, that. I, I exactly. Because if you're tanking and your mentality isn't focused on the game, then that's a whole season that your team ain't, you don't care. Mm -hmm. You're setting yourself yeah. back even further. But hold on. I know we got a, a cutoff at 12 o'clock today. Hard Hold on, before b ahead. before you go, I just want to shout out Jarvis LeFleur in the chat. What shout up, out to Jarvis? my bro Jarvis. Jarvis, I haven't seen you in a minute in the chat. I'm glad that you was able to find this channel over here for the Knicks Morning Brew and the Yankees Morning Brew Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. Jarvis, it's awesome seeing you in the chat, my man. Hope your family's doing well. Happy New Year's to you, brother. But go ahead. I'm going to throw it back over to my man Pots and Pants. Chica. Two topics left before we end the show. Mm -hmm. All right. One's completely off Nick's topic. And then one is let's talk about the Lakers game them all. All right. Mm -hmm. First off topic conversation. Did you guys see what they did to the Empire State Building yesterday? Oh, God, bro. I, I, I can't believe you just brought that up. man. Because it pisses me off that much, Boog. I was like, OK, hold on. Hold on. When someone said, oh, why did they put the Jets colors? I was like, oh, that's crazy. Why would they put the Jets colors on after that? And then I saw the post. We repping the Eagles on the end. Like, on. please tell me that whoever made that decision got fired this morning. Ugh. Like, please tell me that, 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 that. Cause you know, it was some like young Jim millennial, right? It was like, oh, we should show love to our neighbors. We're going to go green and white on the, I don't, I don't, I don't. Don't blame the millennials for this one. Don't blame the <laughs> millennials for this. Millenn Half of the millennials don't even have a driver's oh. license to even work at, uh, at the Empire State Building. <laughs> so I, I don't blame the millennials for this one. But whoever was in charge of this, they need to get all the blame. <laughs> all the blame. I mean, sometimes, you know, money, money is not worth your respect and your pride. You know, and for that to be done in the city like that, you know, you just did, did what you want. You know, I... I you, it is what it is, man. Only in New York. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't, yeah, uh, it's I don't, just... I, oh. bro, all right, I, all right. I would expect that from, like, like Newark, New Jersey or something like that. But from <laughs> New York City, the Empire State Building, the building that King Kong climbed on in the movie, that's what you're going to do? Yeah. Yeah. For the Philadelphia Eagles, oh, for, for the man. Phillies? First of all, first of all, I, I have no... I have no hate towards the Philadelphia Phillies or, or I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles or that city whatsoever. All I'm going to say is make sure you go on YouTube and look up Bill Burr and Philadelphia. And he rips into the city of Philadelphia better than I can ever rip into the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I had to get off my chest. I figured this was the time I had people that would feel my pain as well. How are we feeling about this Lakers game tomorrow? I'll start with you, Jay. What are we thinking, bro? Okay. One thing I can't say, yo, the last, what, two games we don't had against the Lakers been nail biters. If you go back mm -hmm. and remember, Julius loves cooking them. He loves, he comes to play mm -hmm. against the Lakers because he has some personal vendetta against them about, you know, him when he was there, he's no longer there. But I look for us to go ahead and do what we got to do. You know, I look for us to come back and get a victory. We should take advantage. They on a back-to-back -back night. You know what I'm saying? They got Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying, tonight. And then they got us tomorrow. You know, I look for us to go ahead and, you know, do what we got to do and, 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 and get a W tomorrow night. But we need to start protecting home court, you know. I don't look yes. at the schedule and be like, oh, man, the schedule's crazy. We're going to lose right. this and that, that. I look at the schedule and feel like, yo, we need to knock these people off. That's what that's what I feel tomorrow. And I think tomorrow, you know, coming off the um, the um, the poor, um, the poor, um, um, the poor, what is the word I'm looking for? They they didn't have no they didn't have no um energy the poor energy for the mm. um, Brooklyn game they should be pissed off and it should carry yeah. over into that Laker game because if we don't match our same intensity level in the second half in the first half we'd have won that game easily you know what I mean mm. so that's why I say everybody you know games are, games are sometimes not won in just the fourth quarter sometimes games are won in the beginning of the game you know what I mean so we need to play all 48 minutes all four quarters you know what I'm saying be there for every from the tip off into the last buzzer ring you know what I'm saying for all games you know starting tomorrow night against the Lakers yo what up Il Phil how you doing my brother what up what up what up how you guys doing
I'm good, bro. Did you good, did you brother. did you not realize you was on the screen? <laughs> no, I was. I was I, I was reading something and I Oh, I thought he didn't realize he was on the screen. I was like, well, no, this is awkward. I thought I was still backstage, so I was like, oh snap, I'm I'm up. <laughs> they called me up. They called me to the big leagues. So <laughs> that was yeah. all your brother. Your brother did that. That was not me. Just I needed you know to, to to make sure I popped in, got a few minutes with the legend Jay Boogie, so you know I had to kick some things to the curb real quick. When when we gonna get that Phil and Jay Boogie track? We need to get that Phil and Jay Boogie track. Like what's what's you know, going on? You what's gotta going ask on? The celebrity himself. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I mean, I I have no problem with it. You know, um, I mean, I heard, I heard, I heard his pattern, his flow pattern. You know, it's just you know, um. I'm quite sure he's gifted and gifted enough to switch up whatever it is they want. But I pretty much like trying to make sure I grab something and send something down somebody's alleyway. You know what I mean? When I do something, because it works out better for the both. And um, I got some things coming up really in the early near future. I'm just right now I'm on a standstill of really like what I want to do with the rest of this material I got. You know, if I want to just, you know, just put out maybe one or two more songs for the season and just push everything else back. Because I yeah. learned a lot in the music as far as this year. Uh, a lot of my music, I'm talking around the Knicks. When the first year I was talking to of players and stuff, and when things wasn't going right with certain people, it caused me to be wasting material, wasting money, wasting mm. studio yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I learned in my second year. But I got so much music that I got going on that I'm doing right now that it's not going to be hard to all um, miss Phil. All right, all right, we'll we'll make it happen. Oh, I, I, we we definitely gonna yeah, make we it definitely happen. gonna make that. We definitely but Phil. Gonna make before that I get your take on the Lakers game tomorrow, uh, it looks like JJ just put in the chat. Knicks want to give up multiple first round picks for OG, according to Shams just now on socials. I just want to say something about this. I want everybody to know this right now. When it comes to making trades, teams have two different scenarios of trades. I want people to know that. There's a Nick trade, and then there's a league trade. The Nick trade is always going to be more than what the league is going to trade mm. to get these players. They're looking at us because they know, like, we, we're in thirst mode, but we're not in thirst mode. You know what I'm saying? So whatever they offer us, they're not going to offer the same thing for the other team. It's just right. that they offering it towards us. But if you, we don't bite on it, they'll take anything, you know, that's near it from that's... any other team. And they, they're doing that to us because you know, they know we we trying to come up, and they feel like they can sell us high. They don't yeah. want to sell us low. They did that with Donovan, you know what I'm saying? But the great thing about the Donovan, we didn't bite on it. We're still, what? three and a half, maybe four games behind them, and they got not one, not two, and they added on a third all-star to their team. So we can show that we can play without some of these players, but it's when we play against some of the other big all-stars, like the Kyrie situation the other day, you got to have a major superstar, you know what I'm saying, to go against another major superstar. If you don't have that, you have to have a complete surround team to go against teams that have one and two so solidified, maybe three solidified superstars. You have to have a well-rounded team. But just watch out for the ones that's trying to overcharge us, man. Because yeah. they're saying these certain things, they're not charging the same thing for the other teams. They're just charging yeah. the Knicks. Yeah, and let's be real. The market, it, it, it's still messed up from the, some of that trades last yeah. year. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, the market truly hasn't been reset. And because of that, it still puts us in that position where every team knows that if we are looking for pieces – they're mm -hmm. going to try to take advantage of business is business. So I'm I'm hoping we see that trade that kind of resets so we mm -hmm. can really focus on making some smart decisions before the deadline. Um, but Phil. Yo. What's what up, up? Your mic sounds good. You're crystal clear. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no, thanks. no, no, no need for 19 comment to get upset. He said, Phil, your, your mic, mic is mad again. low, like always. <laughs> I didn't know I was called up yet, man. I didn't know. I thought it was still in the G League down there. <laughs> you hold that on stage. We hold that mic. I hear it. Yeah, it's crystal. What does that take, Phil? What we think about the Lakers tomorrow? Um, honestly, man, I, I I'm a little worried um, after what I saw against the Nets. Um, you know, we, we had a good game against Boston, um, but I did not see much effort throughout most of the game against the Nets. Like, it was kind of embarrassing to, like, know that, you know, like, uh, there's a lot of teams where people, like, discredit and they're like, oh, so-and-so wasn't there. 
And I'm like, that's not really a huge determining factor. Even though that's their star, they could lose on any given night still with their star. But when you talk about Durant not being there, there's a little bit of a difference. You know, Durant is a generational talent, you know, and he's been known to to come out and destroy the Knicks, you know, in in most of his performances against the Knicks, you know. So them not having that is one of those, dang, we lost that, you know, that game and Durant wasn't even there. Um, So I think if we play the same way we played that Nets game, we'll walk away with an L, unfortunately, uh, uh, against the Lakers. You know, like, these are games that, as LeBron aims to to make it to where he is the leading scorer, I don't think he also wants to do that with negative marks on, on his, you know, thing. Like, hey, he got there, but the last four or five games to get there, they all took L's as it was just LeBron trying to get the scoring title. You know, he doesn't want that. He wants it to be, he got the scoring title and the team looked incredible while he was doing it in that last span. Um, So I think we got to be very, very careful. I think this is the kind of team that, you know, they know Randall. You know, they know from experience, you know, playing with him, playing, you know, and Randall does like to show up and show out. Um, but sometimes that could be a negative thing. You know, it, 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 if it becomes, I want to show up and show out, it could be a one man show and we can't beat a healthy Lakers team as a one man show. Um, so it's going to take actual group and ball play. That's one thing we saw the Nets did really, really well against us was move the ball till pretty much everybody touched it and the open shot was available. I think that's the only way we beat the Lakers. That's the only way, especially now when they added that little piece in Kedrick Nunn, which doesn't seem like it would move it that well, but it has. Like it's helped them offensively a lot, you know, having having Kendrick Nunn on the team. Um, so, so I'm hoping that, that we play well, uh, because they only lost that last game because a foul wasn't called. Um, that was a huge determining factor. Uh, I think LeBron wants to beat us. I think LeBron wants to beat every team in this next five games to, to, to get to the scoring record. So unless we play like team ball, I don't think it's happening. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how I I love that. That was my own LeBron going viral. Yeah. Yeah. That was 35 seconds. First of of all, the best, the best part about that whole entire thing, right. Was Patrick Beverly, Coming out to the court with one of those cameras. <laughs> Boogie, that's the camera that they use to shoot your videos. He came yeah, out with that boy, camera like, and was like, look. it was wild. That was the best part in that whole <laughs> in that whole scenario. Now, <laughs> that, that, I, I know there had to be a, a Laker cameraman. Like, you know, we got MSG <laughs> cameraman. And there had to be a Laker cameraman. Because ain't no way in the world he's going to just take that camera from one of yeah, that I'll was tell you, hilarious. <laughs> my, 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 so I'll throw it to you, Hector, to close this out. So mm. I, I do believe it's a game we should win. We could, let well, not say should, we could win, okay? Um, but there's a lot of things that are causing me to be like, damn, one, we're at home. And I feel like when I'm we're home, like, <laughs> you, see, you laugh, you make me laugh. You know what? I'm done talking to you. Go ahead, Hector. You. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was just laughing. I'm. So, I apologize. I'm so sorry for laughing. So sorry for laughing. But no. Um, when it comes to this game, I gotta agree with what they put in the chat. Um, I think Kent put it in the chat. Shout out to my man Kent the Haitian as well. Suck mm, by saying my I brother. Hey, where said, you been at, man? Yeah, I hope Ken is good, bro. He said, I think the refs are going to look out for LeBron and make up for that loss. And you know what? They they probably will. Um, because. Mm-hmm. That was a horrible foul, uh, non-call at the end of the game. LeBron definitely should have went went to the line to shoot a couple of free throws. But it, it's a make or miss league. That's what the NBA is. Um, it just sucks to see a game that was so because it was a great game. I'm not sure if you guys were watching the game like at live at the moment, but I was watching the game and the intensity throughout the entire game. It was good. It's, it sucks to see the game being decided on that type of call. It sucks, but. Hopefully we come out. And we don't get embarrassed. Um, they traded for Rui Hachimura. They sent they sent Kendrick Nunn over to uh to the to the Wizards, and we got and they got Rudy Hachimura. So let's see what happens with uh, with Rui and and the Lakers against us. Um, I'm excited for the game. Um, I honestly I know a lot of fans may feel different, but I wish LeBron was breaking that record against us against the Knicks inside of the oh. Garden. I just feel because I just feel. Yeah. 
it's just a it's, perfect storybook story ending to, to yeah. LeBron James' career. Some of the best games he had was at Madison Square Garden. The way is he gonna break this? Where's he gonna break this at the New Orleans Pelicans? Um, um, Frosty, whatever the name of that arena is. What is it? Softy Arena, whatever it's called. You gotta, you gotta go catch the man in your own building in his building. You gotta go catch Kareem in the Laker building. Yeah. You know, that's that's to me that's that's the best way to do it. You know, then for the you know for the for the all uh, for them the killers on TV, all uh, the Knicks are always getting something done to us. You know, we, we you know I, I I know I didn't want to see it. You know, historically we know it's gonna happen, but I rather see. I'd rather see Kareem sitting in the stands at the game, you know, in L.A. and LeBron do it, you know what I mean? And maybe after the game, you know, just to show Kareem you're still that guy, go give him the basketball. I want to see so many. There's so many different scenario stories that you could do amongst LeBron getting that man. But I want to knock their head off because I want to set ourselves up either for the sweep or the break even. All these teams that we got to go face later on down the line, these Lakers, the Clippers, all these West Coast, you must hold home court against them because that win, that 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 win on the road in their building, that late in the season is going to be that much tougher when games are when people are really on their A game. So you need to go ahead and win these games right here. We need to win this game. That's mandatory for us to win this game tomorrow. We play them again in LA. Same thing with the Clippers and all these other teams, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, um, I, I just just wanted to add something. Um, it's a bit serious. Um, Kent shared it with us in the chat. Um, I appreciate his openness and willingness to share this with us in the chat. But he said, "Jay Boogie, my mom passed away from cancer right before Thanksgiving, and I kind of went dark. Getting back into into the vibe late, lately, Kent, my brother. You know, we had a conversation. You know, I just I, it wasn't my place to bring it up or speak on it." Um, thank you for, for sharing this with us, Kent. You know, thoughts and prayers for me and my family are with you at all times, Kent. Guys, if you guys can, send some love to Kent in the chat. Thoughts and prayers. Put the prayers emojis in the chat. Kent, you know your family, my guy. If you ever need anything, I'm one phone call away, bro. Yeah, blessings to you. My condolences to you. You know what I'm saying? You, your family, and your moms. May she continue resting up there. Heavens, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Tough, you know, tough time. I've been there with you, my brother. But you have friends that can help you not only go through it, but get through it. You know what I'm saying? You know, like like I just said, if you need his number, you know, give, give him a call. If you need my number for him, I'm telling him, he can give you my number. He, you can give me a call, my brother. But we know it's ain't no word bigger than moms unless you're talking about God. You know what I'm saying? And I said that in the intro to my song. So I know where you're at. I know how you feel, my brother, you know. Well, I'm quite sure looking and learning from you who you are on these podcasts. She was a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. She's rest in heaven, my brother. And everybody support that cancer stuff. That cancer stuff is real serious throughout our community, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, make sure you deal for your loved ones more than anything else it is in life, man. Yeah. yeah. Send uh, prayers over to you and the fam, Kent, on behalf of KOD Media and myself. Um, appreciate you being in here with us, man. And, you know, Definitely love you, Cat. Players on our end. Yeah. Shotters, you still my shotters, your rude boy, screw face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you a little laugh at my man Kent, man. Got to, got to, got to. Kent, you know you family, bro. Um, you know, like like Boogie said, I just text you Boogie's number right now, so make sure you get that and stuff. But yeah, Kent, you know we love you, fam. Um, you know, everybody out there, like Boogie said, if you have a family member that's going through anything, whether whether it's be a few, whatever they're going through, make sure you always reach out because tomorrow's never promised. That's why every day, whenever I'm on a phone call with Jig and Phil, I always make it a point to tell them brothers I love them because it's true. I love my bros and I'm happy with what we're doing over here, you know. But let's close this out before I start crying on screen. We don't want me to start crying <laughs> on screen because I do get emotional. I am an emotional virgin. Wait, wait. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 the backstage producer said, what, make him cry? No, no. Better I'm ratings? Sorry. Something about ratings. I'm sorry. And you- Listen, <laughs> if Drew is in your earpiece right now telling you to do that, Drew, no. I'm not crying, Drew. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Boogie, man, I appreciate you so much for tapping in, man. You know, we, we, we love the fact that we were able to have it as a, an actual episode with you. You know, you're a staple on our Friday panels. But, uh, man, everything you do as the closer, Mr. Mariano, the Sandman, reincarnated for the Knicks. Man, appreciate everything you do for the fan base. And uh, you know this is an open-door policy for you, Jay Boogie. That'll never change. 
I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, man. I know y'all my brothers and everything. And I know y'all share my home, y'all home, not without with me, but with many others, man. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we got podcast living rooms, man. Well, one thing I want to say before you before you before you get off this um to my homegirl Charlotte, you know, she I had Charlotte up here. Um mm-hmm. to my homegirl Charlotte. Charlotte, I have not forgot about you. I'm just waiting on the right situation, you know, coming back. Because if I do it, I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it right. So I just wanted to let Charlotte know that I haven't, you know, forgot about you just in case she might be she might be listening and rocking right there, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Charlotte's a friend of the show. Phil, mm-hmm. any last words before we dip out, my brother? No, just uh I'm thankful I got to be on. Thank you all for your constant support. We seriously appreciate it. Um, you know, we 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 got some more things coming up. You know, we got mm-hmm. our homie Doug. Doug is gonna be on the show on Wednesday. And we're looking forward to that. Has some, you know, really great takes when it comes to the Twitter spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just, you know, looking forward to continuing to build with you guys. We got some new things coming in, in the next month. So stick with us. And we thank you guys. And if you haven't, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And if you think anyone else would love the channel, please show love, send it to them. Um, and if there's anyone you think should be on the channel, like we want to highlight those that are doing it, like we did with Jay Book, you know, we want to highlight real Nick fandom. So if there's someone you think we should highlight, let us know. We'd love to have them on the show. So thank you guys so much. Yo, hey, shout, out, shout out to Ian Begley for giving us a like and yeah, a retweet we as it. well for our last good, the bad, up? the ugly that came up on Friday. <laughs> he said, Phil, he agreed with you on the apology letter and everything, bro. <laughs> yo, uh, hey, breaking break guess... news, breaking news, yo. Ian Beg says you're listening. I got a song coming out for SNY, and it stands for So New York, and I'm, and I'm running down everybody on your staff. I got a song called SNY, I'm So New York. That's for y'all on your network channel, man. Well, oh. but whenever you can play, whenever you get it ready, you know you can play it here with us. Appreciate that, man. Um, you guys down to do a watch along, Phil? Heck, tomorrow? I mean, it's the tomorrow, Lakers game, right? t- t- Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, I, 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 you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to let people you know. You can count me in. You can count Appreciate me Appreciate everybody in the chat hanging out with us. You know where to catch us. Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, 11 a.m. right here at KOD Media. If you haven't yet, hit the like, hit the subscribe, follow, tell everybody about us. This is the place we can come hang out. People like the Closer, Project Nerd HQ, Phil Porto, Next Morning Brew. Heck, to hit the button. Get us out of here. And like Bruce. always, deuces, baby. <laughs> What it do, Nick Nation? What it do? KOD Universe, stand up. And all you DJs, uh, wake up and get your coffee. I'm a slam on these goats like I'm John Stark. I'm a slam.